our world today we may say why why do we need to be mindful at all so our world is characterized by an alarming imbalance and this was talked up mentioned even more than 50 years ago by martin luther king junior the pioneer of the civil rights movement in america and he said that our scientific power has outrun our spiritual power we have guided missiles and misguided men so we have enormous power to control the outer world right now just by pressing a few buttons we all may be in different parts of the country different parts of the world we are connected so this is extraordinary level of outer power we have but misguided men he's he spoke this quote before we had gender neutral language so it's misguided human beings in general that he was speaking about but there is something inside us that misguides us something that makes us do things that hurt others and hurt ourselves so probably the most tragic example of this kind of misguided people is self destruction self destruction can be in the form of suicide suicide is literally the mind attacking and killing the body and over a million people commit suicide every year that means since i started this talk already two people have committed suicide about that's one suicide every 40 seconds so it's more than that actually it's almost five six people have committed suicide so now what and what he talked about was actually you can say the internet is not there at that time in today's world this misdirection of the mind is even more alarming because it's not just the imbalance that we have a lot of control over the outer world and little control over the inner world rather there is a systematic propaganda to get our inner world to get our mind out of our control now we in today's world are subjected to these three factors there is ever increasing competition among ever expanding distractions for ever decreasing attention spans so in the past if somebody wanted entertainment okay they would go watch tv at home maybe tv in india 20 25 or 30 years ago there was one channel doordarshan to go and watch a movie to go to a theater so now there is ever increasing competition among ever expanding distractions so we have not just movies we have the internet with so many websites and not only so many websites and so many apps and so many forums but they are all competing with each other every new app that comes up there is first facebook there is twitter there is there are so many new apps which keep coming up there is instagram there is <clears throat> there are so many new apps which keep coming up and they all seek and want to capture our attention and what is happening is not only are there more factors pulling us from outside but our own attention spans are decreasing so atten- ever decreasing attention spans and thus our mind gets pulled in hundreds of directions sometimes our mind is like a, if we have a computer browser and some people have like uh, 35 tabs open and one tab is frozen and from that tab some big noise is coming maybe some alarm noise some 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 unwanted uh, beeping some music whatever and we don't even know from which tab it is coming so we want to stop it we can't even stop like that so sometimes we just find ourselves in a bad mood and we don't even know why i'm in a bad mood like this what exactly happened so some part of us is annoyed some part of us is angry but what is it angry what's going on so getting a sense of our inner world is vital and that is actually the whole process of yoga if we consider the process of yoga it goes from outward to inward from yam niyam asan pranayam it goes inward inward as we learn to calm our mind so there is practically no activity which can provide us greater returns than the activity of learning to manage our mind learning to focus our mind and there is no activity that can cause greater danger if not done than 
failing to manage our mind so we all worry if we invest our money somewhere whether we'll get good returns or not we think a lot about it but what about investing some time some thought some energy in managing our most important resource so managing the mind is vital for us so i said i'll talk about four simple steps for managing the mind and these are education experimentation evaluation and elevation so what is what do we mean by education over here nowadays education is big business millions and billions of dollars are spent to try, uh, by people to try to get the best education when we want to talk about education in the context of mindful living it's somewhat different it's what does that education mean we are referring to how do we how are we perceived internally how do we perceive what is inside us so if we consider our inner world it's like a mine it's a mine and there's a lot of stuffs over there the mine is a place where we have to dig and we have to dig and a lot of dirt has to be removed before we can get to the gold or whatever precious item is there so one of the key insights that we all need to get sooner or later in our dealing with the mind is this everything inside me is not me generally whenever thought or idea comes up from inside let's eat this let's watch this let's touch this let's go there let's buy this uh, nowadays with online shopping available it's so easy to buy whatever we want so but when these desires come up what happens afterward if somebody asks us, some people buy 100 things and then they ask why did you buy this some somebody else asked them why did you buy this thing uh uh-huh. they themselves don't know why they bought it it's just something inside them spoke spoke to them and they did it so the key thing the bhagavad gita and the yoga text tell us is that there are factors inside us which are actually not us which are different from us so inside us there are many thoughts emotions memories desires aspirations but they don't exist in harmony we can't have a label okay this is a this is a good thought this is a bad thought this is this it just stays sometimes if we go to a nine go to a, a classroom where there is no teacher and all the students are talking and we can't discern anyone's voice and maybe if some student talks much louder than others then maybe we can hear their voice but just because some student is talking loudest doesn't mean that that student is the wisest what that student is speaking is the best thing to do or even that that student represents the whole class so inside us there are various voices going on so it's important for us to get a sense of what is happening inside without that it's it's like whichever voice speaks the loudest we listen to it and then we neglect sometimes values that are important for us we do things that we end up regretting so that is the need for mindfulness 